What's up, future respiratory therapists? Hey, in this video, we're talking all about predicted body weight. Why is it important? How do you calculate it? And let's make those formulas make sense. Let's dive in. All right, so as I said here, we're talking all about predicted body weight. But let's look at a question first so we can understand why predicted body weight is important. We have a five foot three inch female, 242 pounds, is receiving mechanical ventilation in volume control mode. Which of the following is an appropriate tidal volume for this patient? Choose from these. Now, if you want to pause this video right now, choose the best answer. I'm going to keep talking, but here's what we have to look at. This 242 is a distractor. Because they're giving you the patient's weight and they're hoping that you base the tidal volume based off of their actual weight. That's not predicted or ideal body weight. So you have to be very, very keen on recognizing when are they giving me actual or ideal? Sometimes they'll be the same. But in this situation, 100% not the same. We have a five foot three inch female. Predicted body weight for this individual is not 242 pounds. So the question is, is to identify appropriate tidal volume, we know that that's going to be 6 to 8 mLs per kilogram of predicted body weight. So we need to calculate this patient's predicted body weight based off of the information that we have been given. So when we look at this, we have to understand what is the predicted body weight formula. Well, there's... Different formulas for female versus male. We first have to recognize that. And then there are also two different formulas that you can use to get this value. So this formula here is going to give you the answers in kilograms. So this is the kilogram formula. Okay. So remember, the patient was five foot three inches. That was our female. Okay. Now, what we know is, is that for a female, we start off at 45.5 kilograms. That's the base for every female that is five feet or taller. That's what that says. And then it says for every inch over 60. So for every inch over 60 inches, which is five feet, then we're going to add 2.3 kilograms to that. So for this patient, you just simply have to say, okay, how many inches are we above 60 inches. Well, 5 times 12 is 60 plus 3 is 63 inches. Now you can cut this out and just look at it and go, okay, patient is 5 foot 3. That means they are 3 inches over 5 feet. So I can just plug 3 in here. We're going to multiply that times 2.3. And then again, we're going to add that to our base starting, which is 45.5. Now we take our calculator. We say, okay, well, what is 2.3? 2.3 times 3. And that gives us 6.9. And then we add that back to our base of 45.5. This equals plus 45.5 equals 52 kilograms. This is ideal body weight for that patient, 55 foot three inches tall. Now, let's just talk about the male side for just a second. Let's say we had a male that was five foot 10 inches tall. Perfect. Now you see where the males, because we have naturally larger, biologically larger frames, then we start at a 50 kilogram base. So you have to recognize, you have to remember this. this is, these, are, these are formulas that you just have to know. Females start at 45.5. Males start at 50 kilograms. And then we add 2.3 for every inch above 60 inches, which is every inch above five feet. Well, we're five foot 10. So that means we are 10 inches above five feet. So we're going to add 2.3 kilograms for every one of those inches and then add it back to 50 kilograms. So 50 plus 2.3 times 10 is 23. This patient is 73 kilograms. This is what we call predicted body weight. Now, in all fairness, there is another formula out there that many schools teach. And I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just a different formula. And it gives you the predicted body weight 
in pounds. So that's the difference. The one we just talked about gives you kilograms. This one gives you pounds. And if you recognize, it's the same story. Because for females, we're going to start at 105 pounds. And then we're going to add 5 pounds for every inch over 60. Well, here's what's cool about this. 2.3 times 2.2 equals 5. So remember, we were adding 2.3 kilograms to every inch over, over 60 inches. Well, we're doing the same thing here, except now we've turned all these numbers into pounds instead of kilograms. That's all that's happened here. So if we recognize we have the five foot three inch female and we say, okay, well, let's put these numbers in here. We say, okay, 105 plus five for every inch over 60. Five times 12 is 60 plus three is 63. But we also can, without doing any math, look at it and go, okay, well, she's five foot three. That means she's three inches above five feet. So this is 105 plus 15. This person is 120. 120 what? 120 pounds. Now, to get this into kilograms, you divide it by 2.2. So what we know is we are 120 pounds divided by 2.2 gives us 50 four kilograms what were we on the other one let's go back and look at it we're at 52 kilograms okay 52 54 kilograms you see where these formulas vary slightly but i will tell you that uh i have been teaching at the uh college level now for 12 years and we have predominantly taught the pounds formula to get to 54 kilograms and both of the institutions that I've taught with have well over 90% pass rate on the TMC exam. I don't say that to brag. I say that to let you know that whichever of these formulas you have learned and whichever one you are comfortable with, you will get the answer that is appropriate to help you pass your exam. So you can answer this question correctly, which we're going to go back to in a second. Now, remember on the previous slide, we looked at a five foot 10 inch male. Now, now we're going to start at 106 pounds and we're going to add six pounds for every inch over 60. So we're going to say 106 plus 6 times 5 foot 10, 10 inches above 5, means that this is going to be 10. So this is 106 plus 60 equals 166 pounds. So let's see, 166 divided by 2.2 gives us 75 kilograms. What were we over here? Let's go back and look. We were 73 kilograms. So you recognize that these formulas, ones in kilograms, ones in pounds, are going to give you similar answers without a doubt. Now let's go back and look at the question here. Now that we've looked at and we understand the formula now, now let's go back and look at this question. Five foot, three inch female. She's 242 pounds. This is a distractor. We know that now because we know that this person's ideal body weight is not 242 pounds. We know that. We know that this person's ideal body weight, five foot three inch female, is 120 pounds, 54 kilograms. Now, all we really care about are the kilograms, but you have to recognize when you get this in pounds that that's not correct. She's receiving mechanical ventilation to volume control mode, which of the following is appropriate? Tidal volume. Now, tidal volume is six to eight mLs per kilogram. So, all we have to do is say, okay, well, what was our patient's kilograms? Well, five foot three inch female, we've already done the math, so we just need to go back here and look at it. We know that this female is 52 kilograms predicted body weight. We also know that the pounds formula gave us 54. So remember those two numbers. So 52, we'll calculate it like this first. So 52 times six equals 312. 52 times eight equals 416. Now this is your tidal volume range. That's all you have to work with right there. Now, all you have to do is now simply go over and find the tidal volume that falls in that range. 660 mLs. That's not the correct answer, but why is that an answer? Well, 242 pounds. What happens if we do 242 divided by 2.2? <laughs> we get 110. 110 times six mls per kilogram 660 they want you to pick this answer but this is wrong because it's based off of actual body weight and not predicted body weight that's the message 
that we're sending here, okay? So 375, does that fall in this range? Absolutely, right in the middle of it, 375, 100% right in the middle of it, 300. Well, no, 300 is too low. We're not talking about ARDS where we talk about four mLs per kilogram. 300 is less than 60 mLs per kilogram. It's not the right answer. And then this last one right here is 3.5 liters. Let me say that again, 3.5 liters, three and a half liters. That's too big. That would equate to 3,500 milliliters. So anytime you're looking at this and you're going, anytime you have a, 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 a tidal volume, that's recommended that exceeds about half a liter, give or take, it's probably not the right answer. And anytime it's more than multiple liters, it's just simply wrong. So that's not the right answer. The correct answer here is 375 milliliters. Now, to show you that the pounds formula will also get you to the correct answer, let's go back and look at the pounds formula. Remember, we came up with 54 kilograms when we use the pounds formula. So now we do 54 times six, 54 times eight. What does that give us? Let's see here. 54 times six is 324, and 54 times eight is 432. Guess what? 375 still falls right in the middle of that value, and you still get the correct answer. So I'm not telling you which formula to use. I'm not telling you which one is correct. I'm saying whichever one you're comfortable with, whichever one you have been taught, you have to know that one and you have to be an expert in understanding how to go from pounds into kilograms and you also have to know how to use height and gender to get your predicted body weight, okay? Now, I want you to know that this lecture right here that you just saw is gonna be turned into a PDF and it's gonna be uploaded into my free resources class check the description below in the link in the video description below is going to get you to this course where you can sign up for it get in there there are waveform analysis there's an icu checklist this presentation is going in there there are so many resources going in there over time it's constantly updating go get in that course and get your free resources to help you along your journey to becoming a registered respiratory therapist that's predicted body weight. Those are the two formulas that you can use to calculate it, to understand when looking for, for, for appropriate tidal volume, for assessing vital capacity, you have to use predicted body weight. This is where you can find me. I am on Instagram and TikTok at Respiratory Coach, Twitter at Coach RRT. Come find me on LinkedIn right here at Joe Lewis. If you're a student and you're not on LinkedIn, you're missing out. Go get on LinkedIn and start connecting with the leaders of the respiratory therapy industry on LinkedIn. It's a phenomenal platform that's really grown a lot. You're going to enjoy it. Send me an email to respiratorycoach at gmail.com. Always feel free to send me a text at 817-968-7035. This is my texting platform where I just send occasional inspirational, educational, motivational texts to you individually just to help you be the very, very best respiratory therapist you can be. Do me a favor if you haven't already done so. Hit the subscribe button, the like button, and leave me a comment. I would love to further this conversation with you. Remember, at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.